Well, the suspect in the 2015 disappearance of Crystal Rogers made his first appearance in court today and pled not guilty. Prosecutors also dropped this bombshell in court, saying they have the gun they believe was used to kill Tommy Ballard, and that is Crystal Rogers' father. They say they purchased it from Brooks Houck's brother, Nick. Now, Nick was a former police chief who was using a fake name. Nick Houck was fired from the Bardstown Police Department for interfering in the Rogers case. This video contains the interview of a police officer suspected of helping his brother cover up a murder. When Crystal Rogers, a devoted mother of four children, went missing, suspicion immediately fell on her boyfriend, Brooks Houck. He had waited days before admitting she had not returned home, and her parents were the ones who reported her disappearance to the police. Brooks insisted that Crystal had gone out with friends, but security footage put her last known location on a farm owned by Brooks's family and he had been there with her at the time. At first, Brooks was thought to have acted alone. During one of his interviews with the police, something happened to change that assumption. Brooks received a phone call from his brother, Nick Hawk, who happened to be a local police officer. He was clearly heard advising Brooks to stop speaking with the police. In addition, police canines led officers to the trunk of Hawk's car, where traces of DNA were found. Hawk denied everything but failed to pass a polygraph test. Nick, this is uh, Detective John Wallen. Hello. How are you? Hey, guys. I'm fine. How are you? Good. Let's see if we can find some. Do you want that chair or this chair? No. Uh, the secretary won't be behind us anyway. You all talked about on the way over here, or no, we just basically talked about that he was he was going to come over and talk to us, but talking about his car, really. Okay, yeah, he liked the breeze, smitty. It's actually John's car, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah a little, little dirty, I need to get in clean, but it's been raining so much, that so it's hard to do anything with it. So, we just want to make sure you understand you're not under arrest, okay? I want to make sure that's that's oh, I know that, I'm, yeah, I know that. Okay, and, and it's my understanding that you, you testified at the grand jury this morning. Right? Correct. Okay, and, and Mr. Gohagen had made mention of uh, that you'd be willing to come in and, you know, un under oath, whatever that is. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. Okay, so you're still fine doing mm -hmm. that? Okay. okay. I guess let's just kind of start from the beginning. You don't know us, or I, I don't know you, you don't know me, so uh, let me get your full name. Nicholas Howe. Sorry, yes. Yeah, AT&T. Okay. Any other or blue, or bluegrass. It's one or the other. AT&T or bluegrass. I just changed it about uh, maybe a month ago. Okay. Which date of birth? 12-18-1979. All right. You reside there at 99 Olympia Drive with anybody else? My girlfriend. Who's, what's her name? Amber Bowman. Do you know her date of birth right off? She's born in 84. It's uh, April the 11th. Okay. All right. How long y'all live there? We've only been there for uh, two or three weeks. Okay. And we just, I don't know if it matters, we just moved from 104 Glenview Drive in okay. Bartstown. One for Glen, what you said? Glenview. Glenview. Okay. Um, I guess it's just kind of kind of start from the beginning. Um, you know what you're here to talk to to us about, right? Sure. Okay. What what is that? Hawk doesn't try to play coy. He knows exactly why he's being questioned, and with the disappearance of his brother's girlfriend being such a public topic it would only make him look suspicious if he pretended that this could be related to anything else. Yeah, Crystal Rogers. Okay. How do you know Crystal Rogers? She's uh, my brother's uh, girlfriend. Okay. And, and how long have, have you known her? How long have they been? I'm assuming, did you know her before they started dating? No, I didn't. So when, when did, how long have they been dating? Uh, I'm two or three years, maybe.
Is it two or three years? Mm-hmm. And they have a child together, is that, that right? Yes. Okay, what's his name? Eli. Oh, Eli. Uh, about two and a half. Okay. Okay, and do, do they reside together or are they... Yeah, they reside together. Okay. What's their address? One, uh, 113 or 116 Glenview. So y'all live pretty close when you were at the old house. Mm -hmm. And your brother's name is Brooks, is that right? Yeah, Brooks Howe. How much interaction did you have with, with Crystal over the years? Almost nine. Okay. I mean, did y'all... How, how often would you see your brother and her, or, or just her? Or... I mean, I passed her on the street, and that's about it, you know? I mean, my brother's got a bunch of rental properties and stuff, and I mean, I just don't see him. I, I see him on the road, and that's about it, you know? Okay. He's so busy, we just we, we don't hang out much anymore. Okay. And did y'all go to family functions together around Christmas and Thanksgiving? Or? It, it, you know, if we've got time, we do. You know, I mean, I've got about a dozen rental properties and work full-time with the PD, and obviously got a family, and... Sure. You know, I mean, we're just busy guys. Sure, I understand that completely. We, I think we can we can sympathize with that. Uh, Definitely. Uh, so, in in the two to three years they've been dating, how many times have you been around Crystal? I've been at her this house. I don't know, maybe I don't know, maybe half a dozen times or so. Sure. Could be more. Could be less. I mean, we're we're not trying to to yeah. put you into a specific number. Yeah, I know what you mean, sir. What did you know about them, their kind of, their relationship? What did you know about their relationship? I mean, they didn't really argue or anything in front of you, that's what you're getting at. I don't, I mean, they, usually they seem pretty happy to me, so. Most people shared Hawk's opinion. As far as anyone knew, the pair had no more problems than one would be typical for a couple raising a young child. Maybe. We, we all have, you know, we've got, I've got a brother, and if he's something's going to go call him bitch. You know, he'll call, well, the, hey, you yeah. won't believe what this crazy woman did, or you won't believe this, or you won't believe that. I mean, did he ever give, give you anything like that? No, nah, well, he didn't complain to me. Okay. So how often would you see your brother? I know you said you'd pass him on the street, and that's about it. But how, I mean, how many times a year would you, would you see your brother? You know, if I need a tool or something like that tomorrow, I may see him, but, uh, I mean, I couldn't really put a number on okay. it. You know, I mean, I, I've been... You know, I've, got, I've had the rental properties now for four or five years. I've got most of the tools I need, but every once in a while he does have something, you know, that I need or vice versa. So do you have a, do you have a separate company established for your oh, rental yeah. company? Yes. I know, and I know he's got a rental company property, is that correct? So is it, are two completely separate yeah, entities? You don't, you don't do business with family. Uh, trust me, I understand that too. Um, what's the name of your business? It was How Properties, but it's, it no longer exists. I dissolved it. Okay. In 2014. So it's just kind of doing it on your own. Yeah, I just decided I didn't need the LLC. I mean, just extra money for nothing. The way I saw it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm not expecting to get sued or anything. So sure. And your brother, what's what's the name of his business? How Reynolds. Okay. How many rental properties do you think he's got? I'm going to guess between 80 and 100. The police suspect that Roger's body has been hidden on one of the rental properties. Right now, you can watch another incredibly intense case on my Patreon. Discover the disturbing story of the Ken and Barbie killers, a terrifying tale about a couple obsessed with violence. Dive into their dark journey as they become immersed in unimaginable horrors. Watch this shocking video, along with many others, at patreon.com slash stranger stories plus. And he builds full time also. So is he a framer or is he a... He's an everything. Everything. So he's, he's your all, all purpose man then. He is.
what's I mean, what's what does he do something more than a, I mean, does he do one thing more than another? Like, does he pray more than, than anything else? Does he root more than anything else? Yeah, he's just in all of it. I mean, he's down right there and helps whoever's out there. I mean, obviously, he has uh, you know, certain guys come in to do like the plumbing and electric stuff like sure. that, they're licensed, sure. but I mean, he's, he's in there getting his hands dirty, okay, okay. So is he building for himself for the rental company, or is he building? No, he usually he uh, sells the houses that he builds. Okay, so he's a, a what do they call that? A uh, slumlord? Well, no, uh, not a slumlord, but uh, oh, there's a uh, you build a spec house. Yeah, spec. No, so no, he's building houses, one hundred fifty thousand dollars and up now. Okay, custom homes. So you say you, you, you say it, it may be one, you know, just a handful of times a year. It could be more than that. It just depends on what yeah. what your situation is. Okay. And, and did you, in, in the times that you did see Crystal, I mean, did did you ever have any conversation with her? Or? No, I mean, I really, I didn't. I never had any issues with Crystal, but I wasn't around her that much. I mean, she seemed like a pretty easy going person to me. Okay. Um, do you know any of her family? No, I don't. What about what about your nephew? Do you spend time with him, or I wish I could say yes? I mean, I, you know, I don't really see him much. Okay. Well, now didn't didn't your brother run for sheriff? I guess he, last he, election. How how did he have time to run a campaign? I don't have any idea what he was thinking or any. I just <laughs> I guess he thought he was really good at building. He had a lot of success there, and he thought he'd transition into the law enforcement. Okay. But uh, I told him don't do it. Yeah. So. I mean, what? How did that turn out? Not good. Yeah. Well, you know what? Politics is, you know, police is one thing, politics is another. Exactly. So, um, I mean, did, did why did he decide to run for for sheriff? Did he did he ever say? He, just, he never said. I guess he thought he could. I, I don't know if he planned on uh, continue building and then uh, also be sheriff. I don't know what he was thinking. But right. I tried to talk some sense into him and. I guess it went in one ear and out the other one, so. Gotcha. Gotcha. If you would have won sheriff, you think you made you as chief deputy? I wouldn't work for him. You wouldn't work for him? Well, I mean, I'm happy with the PD. I have no reason to leave. Sure. How long have you been to PD? I was, I was with Lebanon for about a year and a half. I think I've been here for about uh, eight and a half, nine, something like that. Okay. okay. What year did you come on in Lebanon? 2005. Yeah. You said you were living for a year and a half? Mm hmm. What made you come here to Barstow? This is just where I was from. More money, better yeah. benefits. I mean, I, I started out at $7.80 an hour, and then it went to $15 an hour, whatever it was, and I started here. So yeah, it's quite a, that's a double your Yeah, it's about double your salary. Mm hmm. And, uh, any trouble since you've been to PD with anybody? Everybody get along pretty good? For, for, me, for the most part. I mean, obviously a bunch of officers with type A personalities. I mean, uh -huh. you're going to have a few conflicts. But... Sure. You, you never had any conflict with anybody specifically or anything like that. What shift are you working right now? First shift. How long have you been on that shift? Uh, just changed it not too long. We went to 12 hour shifts. It's probably been in the neighborhood four to six months, maybe. What were you on before that? I was working at four to two o'clock in the morning. Who were the guys that you worked with on that shift? Uh, who were the guys on that shift? Uh, it was me, Jason Ellis was on that shift. Uh, let's see, Andrew was on third. Nathan Phillips, I believe, was on second. Michael Medley. I can't remember who else was on the shift. It seems like it runs together now. I've worked with mm -hmm. all of them at some point or another. Yeah. You know, but there was five or six of us on that shift, so. Okay. Um, when's, the, when's the last time that you had seen Crystal? I'm sure it was sometime I seen her just driving around out on the road, but I don't really remember where I was at or. So you knew her. You knew her enough to know her car. To know where her car was. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
What kind of car did she drive? A maroon uh, Impala. Okay. And she lived with uh, your brother at the Glenview address. She did. Okay. And was she running? Was she way back when she saw you? Oh yeah, she saw me. She, you know, I mean, she I probably would recognize me in the truck. If I was out in the cruise, you know, usually she'd see me. Yeah. yeah. Um. So how many? How often would you see her out on the road? I mean, was it? Obviously, more often than you saw a person, but probably maybe two or three times a week. Okay. Um, so the last time you, you remember seeing her, she was in a car driving around. That's what I'm assuming. I don't. I, I'm not 100 percent, but I, yeah, I'm almost for certain. Okay. The last time that you actually were in the physically in the same room with her, oh, when was that? It's been a long time ago. I don't. I don't really remember. I mean, we're talking Christmas, Thanksgiving, before that, after that. Could have been Christmas, Thanksgiving. Okay. I mean, did she? What? What did she talk about? Anything specific? Anybody in specific? I don't remember that. I can't okay. remember what I did two days ago. You know, I really. Okay. Um. So you said your brother and her seemed happy. For the most part, they did. Okay. Uh, I mean, you know, for the most part, you said, what, what, what about well, it? I, there's one example I can think of. You know, I think there's been times when Brooks said that, you know, I think sometimes she complained that, uh, you know, maybe he treated his son better than her kids or something okay. like that, but that's... Rogers had children from a previous relationship, and there was some friction between her and Hauk over them. That wasn't necessarily unusual for that situation, and in itself was not a cause for alarm. That's about the only thing that really stands out. But nothing... Nothing that like was seriously stirring in the relationship yeah. just at all. Okay. Um, okay. So, so you said the last the last time you saw her was within the last probably within the last uh, couple weeks, maybe last couple weeks. Um, did she have a job? I think at one time she worked up at the fast food mart on Bluefield Road, but that's, right. that's been some time ago. Okay. Since then, I mean, do you know where she's working at? Or is, does she have a job? I'm not even sure. Okay. Uh, did she help Brooks out on, on with the rental, rental properties? Or? See, I don't know anything about that. Okay. Um, and when when you would get together, as you know, uh, as you know, just you and her and Brooks or, or a bigger part of the family, where would you all get together at? Yeah, I don't know that we ever really got together. I mean, you know, obviously she's been over at mom's house, you know, mm -hmm. and I've seen her out there, but I mean that that's been a while back. Okay. So we really didn't we really didn't get together. Okay. Now, is your mom's house down uh is it about the y'all's family farm? Mm -hmm. Ask about her Road. Okay. Um I think we went out there or I went out there the other day. There's a, a like a black barn kind of mm -hmm. a thing. It's called the Skid House. Skid House, okay. Um was there a sawmill in there one time? I saw the saw yeah, cedar. My, and, yeah, my grandfather, he, he did. Okay. He had a sawmill. I saw the saw cedar. I said, there's got to be a, a portable mill here somewhere. Yeah. So. Uh, my grandfather, you know, he died when I was like maybe six or seven. So, I mean, it's been, it's been that's, a long time. Yeah, that's been a long, Incredible. a long time. Yeah, that, that had nothing to do with case. I just my own, my own person because I love cedar. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so you don't remember the last time that you had seen Crystal? How about uh, when did you find out Crystal was missing? When do you remember finding out? Yeah, within a couple of days. Okay. Um, how, how did you find out? I, think, I don't know if I saw it on TV or... Yeah, I really don't know. I mean, I don't know if Brooks had mentioned it or I saw it on TV. It was all over Facebook and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, it was everywhere. I mean, national news. I mean, this is this is for all intents and purposes your sister-in-law, mm -hmm. and she she's missing. I mean, you, do do you and your brother just not talk to that extent that you know he? That's, that's kind of bad, isn't it? I mean, you know. Yeah, I mean, but but he yeah. never he never called you and told you she was missing, or no, nobody else in your family called and told you that she was missing. Or, called and asked, have you seen her? Yeah. 
The Hawks were a very close family. It raises a red flag that Hawk claims he isn't sure when he found Rogers was missing or who told him. It was it unusual for her to take off like that? Or? I know Brooks has said she's taken off to her, I think her mom's before, but, I, you know, I, I didn't know anything about that either, so. I mean, I, I know when you get baby mama drama, you try to stay out of it, but I mean, you would think yeah. if he was really, you know, concerned that he would, mm -hmm. hey, my brother's a police officer, he knows what to do, let me, let me call him and see what's going on. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not like that. Okay. So you, you don't know how you found out she was missing, whether it was from Facebook or TV or, or if he mentioned it. No. I mean, I thought, you know, I, I had several people that watched, you know, talked to me about it. So, like I said, it's ran together at this point. Sure. I mean, has, he, talk, has he talked to you about it a lot or? Very little, if any, you know, I mean. Okay. Like, I mean, what, what's, what's he said? I don't know that he said much of anything. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to. I guess I'm not really going to bring it up to him because, I mean, I, you know, I know him well. I know he's a good guy and that he wouldn't have anything to do with something sure, like this. So, sure. I mean, I'm not going to sit there and question him about it, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just feel like I know for sure that he had nothing to do with her disappearance or whatever. And, I mean, I, that's just where I'm at. Sure, you know? sure. Um, but, I mean, you would, you, you kind of, kind of see the flip side of that coin too, don't you? That he's, if he's really concerned about her. Coming home, you might, you might, he might be talking. You know, man, we got to do something to find her. We got to do this. We got to do that. Yeah. Uh, but he's never mentioned anything like that to you. No. What's what's been the mo one thing he's mentioned to you the most during this whole thing? Nothing stands out. Nothing stands out. Um, <clears throat> so she goes, and, and I'm kind of working third party here. So so forgive me, and you may have a better idea on the timeline. Uh, Friday night the third, I think, was the last time that anybody said they they saw her. Right? Mm -hmm. Where was that at? Do you know? I think somebody said it was at Walmart. Okay. So obviously she gets reported missing on the fifth. Is that right? Yes, the Saturday. Or not a, yeah. She goes missing Sunday, on Friday. Sunday. Saturday's the fourth. Sunday. Sunday's, Sunday's, Sunday's the fifth. fifth. So that's when she gets reported missing. Mm -hmm. um, and he never called you for any advice on what to do? No. Okay. Uh, I mean, would that be unusual? I don't think so. Okay. Um, when did, so did he ever call you after he reported her missing? I'm sure at some point he's called, but I mean, I don't really remember what he asked about, but. Okay. Like was that before? Do you remember when he was interviewed? Oh yeah. Uh -huh. when, when was that? A few days after the fact. I mean, I. Like a few days after what? A what few happened? days. A few days after everything came out, the SO started interviewing. Okay. Uh, did you make a phone call to him when the SO was interviewing him? Yes, I did. Um, matter of fact, I think it was a couple phone calls, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. And you know, kind of gotten a little little spat on the phone, or it seemed like that to yeah. some people. What what what? Why did you call? Well, I, you know, just basically. I mean, Brooks is a really cooperative guy, and you know, obviously at this point you want to be cooperative, but you sure. also want to protect yourself. Supposedly, Hawk and his brother do not talk often, but he was worried enough about Brooks to call him during his police interview and advise him to stop cooperating. This is another major red flag. And I think at a time like this right here, I mean, obviously you wouldn't be thinking exactly straight. So I just wanted to make sure that he was kind of, you know, protecting himself while that he cooperated with law enforcement. And mm -hmm. so I didn't want him to, I mean, it's just easy to get things confused and stuff. And, you know, so. Well, I mean, you know, you, you said yourself, he, he's a cooperative guy and you trust him mm -hmm. and to know that he's not involved in this. Then what, what reservations would you have about him talking? Well, for one, the, the guy that's interviewing him has openly admitted that he lies in court. Okay. So, I mean, that kind of bothered me a little bit that John was doing it, but, you know. That's just the way it is, you know. I mean, but you know what? We can't we can't pick and choose what calls yeah, we get. So, yeah. What do you think about uh, your brother? He took a polygraph, did he? Mm -hmm. What do you think about the results of the polygraph? I don't think they would pass him no matter what, you know. I mean, I think he went up there and did well, and I think that's just what they said, you know. I mean, well, I mean, why would you say that it wouldn't matter? Yeah, it just it just seems like it doesn't matter what he does or says. You know, everybody's kind of like pointing the finger at him. I mean, I, that would be natural, but Brooks out did not pass or fail his polygraph test. It was inconclusive, 
although several points were considered troubling. While most people already considered him to be guilty, this only adds fuel to the local gossip. You know, I mean, it's just, it, it, at this point, it doesn't matter what he does, you know, he looks like the bad one, so that's the reason why I feel like I do. Well, and that's one of the things we did. We, we called and checked with our player first because, I mean, I don't know what experience you've had with them. None, I mean, no. I, we, we use them all the time. And, and I put them up against any, any of them in the country. I mm mean, -hmm. they're that good. Yeah, and, uh, and they work for the state police. They don't work for me. They don't work for you guys here. They don't work mm -hmm. for the sheriff's department. They don't have any interest in these cases except to run the polygraph. That's mm -hmm. all that they're interested in. But, uh, you know, just some feedback from them, you know, and, you know, it, was, it, it is what it is. It was inconclusive. So. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I've never even heard of one being inconclusive. But, like, yeah, you know, pass but, fail, but, but again, I don't know nothing about them, so sure. really that doesn't surprise me. Sure. Well, me and him both can, can, can tell you we've learned a lot more about the polygraph in the last four or five years than we ever thought we would. Mm -hmm. So, so you talked to him on that day, but he was having the interview mm -hmm. after you called him. I think I called him once, and I think the uh, task force guys had his phone, and then at some point, I guess they gave him the phone back, and then I got a hold of him. But he'd been up here several hours. You know, it wasn't like I just interrupted right from the very beginning. I thought, what, you know, what the hell are they doing? You so know, I mean, I'm asking the same questions over and over. What these guys done to him? How did you know he had been up here for several hours? I guess he, you know, I, get, I think he called me. Okay, so he called you before and said, hey, I'm going to the PD, I'm getting ready to get Yeah, I think, uh -huh. And what did you tell him at that point? I said, we're going to be cooperative, you know. Say what you mean and mean what you say and just, you know, do the best you can. Did And what did you say to him after when you said he'd been here for a couple hours? What was, what was... I just asked him, I said, what, what you know, what the hell's going on up there? They're asking the same questions over and over, trying to trip you up. Or what, what, what's the deal? And he said he was given a... Uh, detailed statement or whatever. I said, well, that's fine, you know, just, uh, you know, at a time like this, you know, uh, things are spinning, you know, just, you got you got to protect yourself while you cooperate, just kind of. Did you ever tell him to leave? The no, I didn't tell him to leave the interview. Right. Did, did you ever tell him to seek legal counsel before talking to the police again? No. Okay. Um, so you, you, you didn't tell him you need to get out of there or you don't no. trust these folks up here? No, I said go ahead and finish your, uh, go ahead and finish your narrative, whatever it is, your written statement that, you, that you're giving them, but just, uh, you know, just, just watch what you're doing, you know, but, you know, be sure you're thinking clearly and cooperate and go along with it. I mean, you know, I guess the, the conundrum I'm kind of having in my own head, because like I said, we're coming at this from the outside. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't, we don't have a vested interest in it we're really one way or the other because it's you know not our not our baby but mm -hmm. you know if he's if he's to the point that you're worried about him thinking straight don't you think he would be talking about it more to you or to your family members about you know well, well i wonder where she's at i wonder where, what happened yeah I, I think people deal with problems in different ways i mean i you know i can psychoanalyze it sure but uh, yeah, just different people handle things different okay. And is this typically how he handles a stressful situation? I mean, you've, you've, you've been brothers for yeah, 30 some years now, so. Yeah, I mean, I really haven't uh, ran across another situation like this, you know? I mean, yeah, I, I don't know what anything compared to. Well, I mean, you know, say, say for example, he's got, you know, three rental properties that need this, this, and this done, and he's got two houses he's got to get put up, or, mm -hmm. or something's got to get done that week. How does he handle that stress? I mean, does he just go forward? Does it crumple up like a like a piece of paper? Yeah. Well, he's got a hundred thousand. What do you think? He goes forward. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And and you know, Katie barred the doors. We're getting this done. Is that pretty much how he? You know, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. Is that? Yeah. I just, I just I think he tried to do the best he can. If he can handle, he just goes on. I mean, obviously his stress level is going to be up. You know, with all sure. the rental properties and everything. But I mean, he's been pretty successful. So. Sure. Sure. But I'm not right there walking along with him, so I can't really testify okay. as to what he's actually doing from day to day. Okay. So you all have said you, you, you've been out to the farm, and, and do you all go out there together to work, or do you? Or whatever. I mean, he does his thing, and I do mine. Okay. There's a big lake out there with fish. Yeah, we got four wheelers. He wants right. a place to go to and relax. And How many acres is it? Two, 250 to 300, maybe. Been in the family for a long time, or yeah. Yeah, my grandfather. I don't know what year he bought it, but I mean, it would have had to have been probably fifties or sixty, something like that. Wow, yeah, that's 
been in the family for, for a long time now. Mm -hmm. um, so when, I know you said you got the what, skid house, is that what you call it? No, no, uh, that's what they I mean, he built skids for a living, so okay. that's what they stored them in. Gotcha. They just kind of adopted the name. And, okay. I mean, do, you, do each of you have your own area out there, or is it all his? Is it all? I mean, we all use it, but I mean, it's, it's his place, you know, okay. his and mom's. But I mean, do you have like a, a is it like is it just communal tools and tractors and things like that, or do you have like a these are these are next tools, these are roaches tools? No, man. Are, no. Okay. I didn't know how you know some people have like their own individual sections of yeah things. How come how come he owns it with your mom? Did I don't you? know that he owns it with mom. I don't. I, you I, say don't, it's it's in, I don't know if it's. A, it, I thought it was in mom's name, but he's the one that bought. I don't. I, I don't even get into that, you know. Mm -hmm. I think it's in mom's name though. So I mean, it, it's it's your own, yours just as much as his, right? Well, no, I mean, I think he paid for it. So I mean, really, I, it, it's in mom's name. He paid for it. It's kind of a messed up deal. But no, no I mean, it, if it's been the family since the fifties, how would he have paid for it? Did he buy? He, he bought it. There's, tw there's twelve. There's twelve or thirteen brothers and sisters. Oh, okay. and they sold the farm, and he bought it. Okay. Okay. So he he bought no, out the rest it. of the family. Yeah. Okay. He, he bought it. Okay, so when Grandpa passed, I guess, is that when that all happened? Or was it before? Oh, that? no, Grandpa passed when I was like five or six. Okay. And then my grandmother just died, you know, five, six, seven years ago. Okay. So when, when she passed, then that's when yes. he, he bought out the other brothers and mm -hmm. sisters. Okay. So when, when, when was the last time, I guess, you and him were out there together? I would have been out there within the last uh, couple weeks, you know. I mean, we run into each other out there, you know. I mean, he mm -hmm. he takes stuff out there. You know, he's, he's got a pile of stuff out there that, you know, from his building sites, he'll pile it up out there instead of taking it to the landfill. And I guess where he's too tight to pay the landfill bill, you know. But we run into each other, but we're both so busy, we just kind of pass, you know. Okay. Uh, well, at least in the, within the last couple of weeks, would it have been before or after Crystal went missing? I've seen him out there after. After? Yeah. Right. Was it? Do you specifically remember what day? I don't. Okay. There's a camera out there. I mean, you, you know, mm -hmm. it, it can be checked. Okay. Um, you, in, do you have, do you drive your cruiser out there? Oh yeah. Okay. So it's not uncommon for you to drive it out there. No, I use cruiser all the time. Chief wants us to, you know, he wants us to use them off duty. That way, it just kind of provides deterrence, and mm -hmm. uh, Chief loves that. Yep. Be seen. Oh, there's police everywhere. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a. Kind of, kind of the same mentality we have uh, from our commissioner. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, what when you drive the cruiser out there, what are you going out there to do? Just hang yeah, out, or just ride the four wheelers, hike. So you're not going out there to hook a trail or anything to back your cruiser, talk no, back into town. No, no, no. Um, all right. So you said within the last couple of weeks, and it was so we can specifically say in the last week. Um, Today's the fifteenth, uh, and she was last seen on the third. So between the third and the fifteenth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, you you went out there with him. I mean, did you go out there together? Did you meet him out there? No, I didn't. Think he, did. he was just happened to be out there. Okay. Um. I mean, did did you talk to your mom? Did you were, were you at her house? Did you go out fishing? Did you go out yeah, check I mean, on I, cattle? What I mean, what did you do? Four wheeler riding and cattle. I mean. I saw mom. I don't really remember what we talked about, you know, but we just more or less passed off. So, I mean, I don't always stop at the house. Okay. Well, when you talked about, you said there's cameras out there. What are you talking about? Well, they said there's one right there at Patty and Lawrence's house. I mean, right as soon as you start up Pascal Ballard Lane, you know, the first house on the right, yes. there's a camera on that house. Oh, okay. Okay. So, I thought you meant on the farm. No. There's cameras. Uh, okay. I guess, I mean, it's no secret that, that your cruiser was. The chief asked you to bring it in. Yeah. Uh, he didn't ask me to bring it in. He came to my house. Okay. Yeah. When, what, what, what do you normally keep in your trunk? What's, what's a normal duty setup? Like I know ours looks like, you know, evident oh, store exploded in our trunk. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, I've got a cardboard box back there, and I mean, it's got, you know, say it's got a flashlight. So we're obviously rechargeable flashlights in the car. There's a uh, mini forms. There's a, there's a, a PBT fire extinguisher. There's a department issued shotgun in the car. There's a bag up front with all kinds of stuff. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in those cars. Do you generally keep all that stuff in your trunk all the time? 
some of it's in the trunk, some of it's up front in the seat. You know, all the all the forms I use every day would be up front. You know, I've got something that attaches to the passenger seat, and it's got all the forms, actually report forms, and all the stuff I use every day. You take that car home with you. It's a take home car. Yes. Nobody else uses it unless no. something was to come up. Some of the things Hawk typically carries might have been used to help dispose of the body. It would have been foolish to have the department issued car connected with a crime, but he wouldn't be the first officer to make that mistake. The only person that's ever, the only other person that's used that car is uh, Tom Blair. It was issued to him first, and then it was passed down to me. Mm -hmm. But that's, you know, that's been a while back. Yeah. How long has that been? You think? That's been a couple of years. Okay. Um, so you've been the only one that's driven it in the last couple of years. Oh yeah. Um, do you have stop sticks or anything, stingers? I don't. I mean, that is, some units do. Right. Um, so what you keep in the trunk is a cardboard box with some extra stuff in it, fire extinguisher. Hats, just rain jackets. Hats, rain jackets. I mean, I can sit here and try to tell you a ride on those, but I probably would come up with half of them. When they, when they uh, took your car, when the PD took your car from your house, what, uh, what was in the trunk then? Well, it's this morning grand jury came up with just all the stuff I just told you. But there was also uh, one other thing I can remember that was there was a, uh, I don't know, just a, just a regular blanket for moving. You know, where I moved from 104 Glenview Drive to where I'm at now, I took the blanket that was there and I just put it between furniture to keep it from marring up the furniture, you know, the mm -hmm. finish on it. So it went down the road and it was going to jingle around and I mean, it didn't in the trunk of your cruiser. Mm -hmm. You had furniture in the trunk? No, no, I didn't. Uh, uh, no, what I did. I, I got the blanket at the farm, I used it, and then I was going to take it back in a few days, I forgot about it. Mm -hmm. So it's sitting there in the trunk, you know, but no, I use, I use my trailer and truck. Okay. So instead of putting it in the truck, you put it in the trunk of the cruiser, though? Yeah, I was going to return it back out there, so I just uh, took put it in the trunk, and then when I was out there, I was just going to return it. Okay. where I found it. Did you just not never get around to it? I didn't. Where did, where, you said you got it from the farm. Where specifically did you get it from? The skid house. There's several of them down there. Where, where at specifically in the skid house? Uh, and when you walk in the front door right there on the right hand side. Okay. Do the other blankets look just like that blanket? Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, I mean, it'd be easy to, to say, look, there's still two blankets here. That's the same blanket yeah. as what was there. I think so. Now, now were, were all those things in, in your trunk when they took the car mm -hmm. other than the blanket so nothing, uh, was missing, thing, nothing was missing out of your trunk as far as your fire extinguisher it was in there everything, everything was in there with the blanket okay so everything was in your trunk just like you carry it when you go to work mm -hmm. except the blanket was in there with it yeah so do, do you remember going out to the farm the evening of july the 8th i don't but i very easily have been out there that was that was incidentally the same night that your brother was the same night your brother was interviewed by police. Yeah, Wednesday, July. Mm -hmm. uh, you said there was cameras out there on that that house. Mm -hmm. uh, would have the, the cameras would have caught your your car following Brooks. Wouldn't on surprise the way out to the wouldn't to surprise the, me. But uh, you said generally, you know, you would just go out to the farm and you would just meet him there. On this occasion, you all both would well, usually, I, usually, I don't meet him there. I mean, you know, he's just out there doing his own thing, and yeah. then I go out there and do my own thing. I mean, well, I mean, if that's what happened that night, it would have been just perfect timing that you're following right behind him, mm -hmm. that you just so happened to meet him at the farm. I see, I see what you're saying. Okay. Uh -huh. So, so think back. Was there a time that you all both went out there at the same time for a specific reason? Not that I recall. So it just would have been coincidence that your car was following right behind his truck when it passed by that camera going to the farm. Yeah, that's happened before. Mm -hmm. So this night in particular, it would have been, you would have left after dark. You all came together and, and you would have left after dark. Do you remember he, that night? Easily could have. Okay. I mean, do, I mean, do you remember it? No, really I don't. Okay. Um, do you remember, did you all, were you all in the skid house? Were you, were you at your mom's talking? No, I mean, I can't even remember what he was doing. I mean, it was the 8th, it's the 15th, I don't know. Okay. I mean, do you, do, you, do you remember being out here, out there with him at the farm that evening? I think I remember seeing him out there. Okay, so you didn't, you, you're, you're saying you didn't intentionally follow him out there, and did you all leave, do you remember leaving together? Mm-mm. 
Why did Why did he leave earlier? You leave earlier? Do you remember? I don't have any idea. Did you leave first, or did he leave first? I don't know. But you remember? I mean, it's just been a week ago. Mm -hmm. Driving down past the Ballard, your car behind his truck. I mean, you got to turn in the farm there. Do <clears throat> you remember? You, can you can you go back and put that in your head? Just driving down that road, and you see your brother in front of you. What happened after that? I can't. Hauk is becoming more guarded in his answers as the questions grow pointed. His expression is tight and closed off, indicating he is withholding something. Let's let's go back. You remember talking to your brother on the phone when he was up here, right? Mm hmm What did you do after you got off the phone with him? I really don't know. Do you smoke? No. Chew tobacco? No. Drink? Nope. No. Drink coffee? No. Nope. You know, they fun, do What's that? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> Working all the time, like, I understand that completely. Um, so, it, it would be possible that y'all were out at the farm together that night. You just don't remember specifically. You said the 8th? Yeah. Could have been. Okay. Did you work on the 8th? Last Wednesday. You work on Wednesdays? What day did you take the car? Because that would... I haven't been to one Thursday. Thursday the ninth. I don't think I could. If I was at the farm on Wednesday, then I couldn't have worked. Okay. Yeah, I don't think so. So, what days are you generally off? <laughs> Let's see. So, like one week, I'll be off uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Come back Monday. Work Tuesday, off Wednesday. Okay. Work Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's, it's hard to keep up with. Sure. I mean, it's a mess. Well, well, how, how, do you, how do you keep up with it? I've got a, a schedule that I own. Okay. Yeah, I've got, to, I've got to leave my schedule still today, mm -hmm. even five, six months later. Now, what time do you, what's your normal shift time end? Seven o'clock. So, so, so say if you were, if you went out to the farm eight, eight thirty. Well, then I could have, oh, then I could have swung that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so it's safe to say that if you were driving your cruiser out to the farm, you weren't working. Almost definitely. Because you don't leave the city to go out to the farm no, while you're no, working, no, right? I wouldn't do that. Okay, so you wouldn't do that. So you would have been off. That was, remember back, that was the same day that he was up here being interviewed. Mm -hmm. okay, it would have been Wednesday. If he was up here interviewed, you had phone conversations with him before he came up here. Uh, he told you he was coming up here. And then after a couple hours, you called, checked on him, you know, told him to protect himself, whatever it was, the conversation that you mm -hmm. had. And then after that phone call, within two hours, both of y'all were driving to the farm on the camera. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we know all that. There's no debate about that. We know that. Mm -hmm. What we need to know is why y'all both went down to the farm. Because I know, I know it's going to be hard for you to remember a week ago, mm -hmm. but I can remember a week ago if I'm thinking about a conversation I had with my brother and something like this going on, because yeah. this doesn't go on all the time. So, I mean, we're going to call it like it is. Mm -hmm. you, is it, do you don't want to remember or can you remember? I, I can't remember. Okay. Because this is what's happened. You made a phone call. He was up here within two hours of him leaving here. Both of y'all were on the road on the way to the farm, and the camera shows that. Mm -hmm. Time and date stamp. Phone call. Time and date stamp. You're out there. What, what went on while you were out there at the farm? If I knew, I'd tell you. I mean, I wish I could give you a detailed written statement. I don't know. I guess to kind of jump back to you, to the cruiser here for a minute. Do you, is there any reason that there would be any blood in, your, in the trunk of your cruiser? No reason at all. So you don't transport any biological evidence on a regular basis? No. Uh, when was the last scene that you had somebody that was bleeding? How long has it been? It's maybe a wreck or something like that. That's been a long time ago. Okay. I mean, we're there's no. I can tell you, there's no blood in front of my cruiser. I can. I can guarantee you that. Okay. Now, what about on anything that was in your trunk? Would there have been blood on anything that was in your trunk? There's no way. Absolutely none. Now, what about the blanket that was in your trunk? No way. And you picked up that blanket when? 
don't know exactly. It was uh, uh, two, three, four days after, you know, uh, they, they filed the missing person report. Okay. So a couple of days, a couple of days after they filed the missing persons reports, when you picked up that blanket, used it to haul the stuff, then put it back into your freezer. I think so. So that would have been how many days you think the blanket was in your cruiser truck before Thursday when they took your cruiser? Man, I hate I hate to even put a number on it. I mean, I, I really yeah, don't one, know. two, three, ten. How many? Things? I'm not even put a number on it. Hulk hedges his answers, trying to give them as little information as possible, without making it look like he is deliberately obstructing the investigation. I, I can't, I, you know. But you know, I mean, for, do you know for a fact it was after they filed a missing person's report that you picked it like it up? I don't even know that for a fact. Well, when did you move the furniture? I, you know, I've got a dozen rental properties. I've been moving stuff out of, you know, the garage over there for two or three weeks now. You know, I, I've, I've got, got the garage where? 104 Glenview Drive. What did, how long have you been out of 104 Glenview? You said you're, are you did just a few days. Okay. Was there a certain day you had to be out of there about? Mm-hmm. What was that day? Uh, July the, I wish I could the exact well, day. Well, who, who gave you the date to get out? The guy that bought it. Okay. So there's paperwork that shows he takes possession of it on a certain day. Mm-hmm. How many days before that did you move that furniture out? We can reference that. Maybe what furniture out now? Just all my furniture? Whatever you use the blanket for. Uh, I would say, I'd say a few, at least a few days before, you know. So a few is two, maybe? Is that, is that what you would term that? That's what I would guess to make. Okay, so say you had to be out by July 9th, then a few days before that, or something like that? It sounds good to me. I mean, I, I really. I really don't know. Who was the guy's name that bought the property? Uh, Mike Ballard. Mike Ballard, is is there paperwork on that? Did you go through a realtor? No, we, I sold it for sale by owner. Okay. And uh, did you do a contract or did you do a deed transfer? Yeah, you know? we did a contract on it. Okay. Do you have a copy of the contract somewhere? Uh, I do somewhere. So there'll be some way we can reference oh, it. Yeah. Did you did you tell anybody that you were on the even the eighth year with your girlfriend online and you didn't go anywhere? Did I tell somebody I was with my girlfriend online? That your girl you were you were home with your girlfriend online on the, the evening of July the eighth and didn't go anywhere. Last Wednesday, no. I don't I don't remember that. Okay. Um, who have you talked to about this so far? I mean obviously we're talking right now. Just the people the grand jury. Not That's the only, only other person you've talked to about this investigation mm -hmm. is the grand jurors and us three people in this room. Yeah. Very little with Chief, I mean. Did you, did you talk about it with your girlfriend? Very little. I mean, like I said, we didn't really hang out with Crystal or anything, so I mean, I haven't went into any, any detail with her. Well, I mean, is she, I know, I know the typical woman is going to ask 10 million questions around something big that you were. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we're both married. We know how our wives are. What about this? What about this? What about that? Amber really not like that. Not like that. No. Okay. Um, do you talk to any of the other officers here? I mean, y'all are obviously off. I've, I've been off work. He just put me on paid leave or administrative. I mean, did, did he tell you not to talk to anybody about the investigation, or is it just do, do you not socialize with a whole lot of people from work outside of work? Or no, I, mean, I don't see a lot of them at work. Um, I know, you know, with us, the guys that we work with, we're we're talking on the phone all the time. We're we're real social with each mm -hmm. other. Is that just not the case here? Or? I haven't talked to anybody about it. Okay. But just it. just in general, I mean, are you on the are you social with with? The guys you work with, like yeah. Jason Ellis, did you talk to him a lot? Oh, I work with him. Well, yeah, I mean, I talked to all the guys, but I mean, it's not like we hang out on the weekends together or anything like right. that, so. But when you're here at work, you talk about oh, stuff. Oh, most definitely. Any, is, any of the officers or anybody come and approach you and ask you questions about the case? You know, no. of knowing that you're kind of close to the, they have to the have, family. They haven't asked. 
And you haven't, t- you have or you haven't talked to your brother about this case? I haven't. With very little to nothing. So, I mean, what, how did the conversation go when he said, he called you and said, I'm on my way up here to the PD to be interviewed? I can't remember, I can't remember how he stated it. He just, I guess, just said they were going to interview him. And that may have been like his second I mean, did he, seem, did he seem nervous? Was he scared? Was he asking for advice? Was he confiding no, in you? Like, what was he? Brooks, the same old Brooks. I mean, if you don't talk that much generally, and your brother calls you, there's got to be some reason he's well, calling you. Yeah, well, I mean, he, he calls me from time to time. It's not like we just completely ignore one another, mm-hmm. but we don't just hang out all the time. But if he called you, you know, that day, what would what, what did he say? I have no idea. I mean, you're, you're the only one that was on the phone line with him that time, right? Just you and him? I mean, no. There wasn't anybody else. It wasn't a three-way call. It was no, his, no. his phone calling you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can't remember anything that was said at all. Mm-hmm. He didn't say, hey, should, is there something I should do? You know, should I wear a nice shirt? Should, you know, Brooks has got a should I fix my hair? You know, that kind of thing. Brooks, no, nah, Brooks, he's just uh, kind of construction worker. I mean, he's come right on in here. I mean, he's not a, he's not like that. But, I mean, he, he obviously knows that you know more about police work than what he does. Well, obviously. So he's, you know, if you've got a question about how to frame something and, and it's something he's better at than you, you're going to call him and ask him, right? Yeah, but Brooks didn't have anything to hide. I mean, no, he hadn't asked me anything like that. You know, but Brooks, Brooks hadn't changed any at all. So he was just saying, hey, if you, need a, if you need to get a hold of me, I'm going to be up here at the PD doing an interview. Kind more of or less. But then you... you called him back because you were just worried because you had well, I really wasn't did he say I'm gonna I'll call you when I'm done is that what he no, said he didn't say call me when he was done <clears throat> no and I mean it's not that I was really worried I just like I said he's just a Brooks is a really cooperative person and with things spinning like they are I just wanted to be sure that you know things were done the right way sure I mean I know you made mention of one officer here that, that you think might not be you know, the most trustworthy person in, in your words. Mm-hmm. Uh, but is there, I mean, is there anything else that goes on around here? I mean, is the whole department like that, or is it just... Oh, uh, no, I mean, we've got a really good department. Okay. I can't knock the department at all. In the sheriff's department as well? Yeah, there's a lot of good guys over there. So, I mean, you obviously had some reservations about something because you called them. It, it was just that one officer, that's the only reason why. During Brooks Hawk's interrogation, Nick Hawk can be heard on the phone angrily ordering his brother to stop speaking with the police. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I just well, how, I just, how did you how did you know that Snow was the one interviewing him, not one of us? Well, I, think, I just assumed that I guess since he'd been interviewed before that you know, I mean, he was the one handling it. So, I mean, there's other good officers here. What if it was like Kaminsky or somebody else? I mean, would, yeah, I don't think I've been that much worried about it. So you you knew that Snow was going to be the one interviewing him because he told you that Snow called him. Is that what you're saying? I can't even really remember that. I just. He just said he was going to be interviewed, and I guess since Snow had interviewed him before, that I just assumed that he'd be the one doing the interview in the end, so. All right, hang tight. Let's go check on something real quick, and we'll be right back. Okay. Friday, just this past Friday, a couple days ago. 
I don't. And we didn't meet with him on that Friday. I'm not not aware of. Do you remember going over to Brooks's house and unloading some stuff out of your trunk into your mom's car? I don't know that I've unloaded anything from the trunk of the Yeah, there's a, you, you've got neighbors that have, you know, a spot that they can actually see your cars in the driveway, right? Mm -hmm. Over in that area. Now, a, a neighbor stated that they saw you taking something out of your trunk and placing it in your mom's car. Uh, that didn't happen. Nothing. I mean, you didn't even take a fire extinguisher out or anything. Nope. Okay. Where would the fire extinguisher be if it wasn't in your trunk when they took your car? Should it be in the trunk of the car? I don't think it is, is it? I don't think there's a fire extinguisher back there. It wouldn't, nothing would be in your mom's car out of your police cruiser right now if we went and popped it. Well, no. you know, if we went and looked, if she let us. Not a thing. So, is, going back to that the Friday night, is there... Would there be anything on your phone or your phone records that would show a call between you and Brooks at 8 30 p.m. on Friday? Your guess is good as mine. You, you want welcome to check it. One of the reasons that Hawk leans so heavily on a faulty memory is that he knows phone records will expose an outright lie. So, do you, do you have your phone with you? Mm -mm. Okay. Where's it? Is it home? It is. Okay. Would you, would you be willing, willing to let us download it? Put it on the cell right? Just just copy the contacts of the phone. Yeah, it's all right. it'd, it'd take, take an hour or two. I mean, it obviously wouldn't be right this minute. We don't have a cell right here with us. But no, no. And you don't have a cell phone with you. Okay. What kind of phone do you have? iPhone. Is it a four, five, six, six plus? I think it's four or five. Got a passcode to it. The charger, is it, is it the wider charger or is it the thinner charger? About that wide. That wide? Yeah. It's like five, five, five or four. Five and six use the hot chargers. The so heavy one. one. Yeah. So probably four. But it doesn't have a passcode on it. Mm -hmm. Going back to the, the eighth when you called your brother when he was up here interviewing, um, what was the tone of that conversation? Was it just a kind of like what we're talking here, real calm, collected? No, I mean, I, you know, I probably raised my voice a little bit. I mean, I, you know, I obviously wanted John to know that I called up there. You know, I mean, he said right, there, right there beside him. Mm -hmm. I didn't have anything to hide. You know, like I said, I wanted to be sure things were getting done right. And, sure. I mean, he'd been up here for hours and hours. And I wanted, I wanted him to cooperate and everything, but I wanted him to protect himself also. I mean. If, if you, you raised your voice to the point that we could sit there and basically hear word for word on the recording. On the audio recording. On the audio recording. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's how much you raise your voice. I mean, yeah. that, that's... The news has to be surprising to Hawk, although he gives no outward sign that he is worried. Still, now he knows that the detectives could hear exactly what he told Brooks, and it doesn't match up with his story. A little bit more raising your voice. It almost sounded like a shouting match. I mean, did... I don't really see it that way, but I mean, I, I wanted him to listen, you know, I mean. Okay. So that, that night after you called your brother and told him to leave, or told him to, to be careful or, or take care of himself, et cetera, et cetera. Um, did you all meet up anywhere? Not that I recall. I don't think we did. I... Well, the, you know, you talked about the videos out there at your, Mm -hmm. at the house on the corner of Pasco Ballard. Mm -hmm. um, that video does show you and your brother going out there, arriving at the same time, right behind each other. Mm -hmm. You got witnesses that said they remember passing both of you, you know, on 49. Mm -hmm. You know, one right, you, he was in front and you were behind. We didn't make a special trip out there together, if that's what you're getting at, I mean. I mean, that's I, just, that's just a, just a coincidence that y'all showed up at the same time mm -hmm. to go out there. You know, and and then y'all were out there till right at eleven twenty-two. You you start out and stop down at the end of the drive, back back up, and then y'all leave out together. What's that mean? You saying I, I backed up, or mm -hmm. you, you you started down the drive and stopped, and then backed back up the hill a little bit, and then I guess I don't know if you're waiting for him or what, but y'all left together. 
I, I don't remember that, but well, I mean, well, we know we know you wrote that we, you arrived together and mm -hmm. you left together. We know that. Which kind of leads us to, to the issue with the cruiser here. Okay. Mm -hmm. We got we got some issues. Okay. Okay. You, you're aware that when the cruiser was taken from you, that, that it was actually taken to the Kentucky State Police Forensic Central Laboratory. That's right. So you know, keep it down. Okay. So why it's at the lab? They they have you ever heard of luminol? You ever mm -hmm. been in any kind of criminal mm -hmm. investigation? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. You know what luminol is used for? To find blood. Okay. Or other bodily fluids. Bodily okay. fluids. Uh -huh. Okay. So we always excrete bodily fluids, sweat, you know, vomit, anything, you know, mm -hmm. uh, saliva. All that is is what would fluoresce. Why would why would your trunk look like a Smurf if they sprayed it? Why would it fluoresce? The I mean, it would look like Chernobyl. There's a couple spots in your trunk in that blanket. I mean, just lit up like Chernobyl. Why why, why why would that? There's not going to be any blood in the trunk. Okay, okay. well, I'm not say blood. I'm talking about other bodily fluids. I don't have you blood. Um, there shouldn't there shouldn't be any body bodily fluids in the trunk. I mean, there, there's only one way bodily fluids can get into the trunk. That's if a body's near by, right? You know, that's what I would assume. Okay, um, or unless you know somebody puked in your trunk or something like that. I don't think right. that happened. I don't think that's the case. So my feet in trunk or no. So why 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 would that be if that blanket when they looked at it at the lab? I've got no explanation for that. I don't have. I mean, none whatsoever. Nobody has access to that car, but you you drive it. You put the blanket in there. You said that. There's something on that blanket or in that car. You're the person that has something to do with it, correct? Well, I'm assuming, but okay. I mean, there there shouldn't be now, there shouldn't be anything in the front of the car. I mean, I don't know if somebody made that up or what the deal is, but I. I mean, I mean we're, we're not in the business. Yeah, making stuff up. Yeah, we don't. I mean, you know, that's not that's not what we do. I'm just telling you, our job is to find out what happened. It's not to to change the course of events as they happened. It's to find out what happened. So we can't change what happened in that trunk. We can't change um, that the test showed that there's bodily fluids in that trunk area. What what we need to do is we need to find out why that's the case. And, and you, you, you see where we're coming from now. I mean, we've got two of you getting there together. You know, you say it's a coincidence. Two of you leaving together. The next day, your your cruiser is is found with this you know the stuff in the trunk and it's taken to the lab. It's got bodily fluid in it. I mean, I, I wish I knew what to tell you guys. You guys just got to test that and, and let me know when you find out. I, there's no reason anything should be in the trunk of that car. Did, did you, did your brother ever call you and say that he'd done something to Crystal? No, he did not. Because here, here, here's the case. The case is, you know, you're a police officer, we're police officers. Right. We all know how that this job works. You know, I don't believe in coincidence after having this job. I don't know if you still do or not. Not much. I, I don't, because you know that when somebody is sitting here talking to us and telling us that everything's a coincidence and we have either physical evidence or video or something to, to prove that that's mm -hmm. not the fact, we, we kind of stop believing in coincidence. Yeah. Now, that, that's the case of where we're at right here. You well, know, I mean, there's, I there's, there's too much linking you and him leaving the, when he leaves the police department going down the road, both arriving together, both leaving together. There is some reason why you all went out to that farm. Now, I, I'm not a big you know, fan of amnesia either because I've heard that 20 or 30 times a week when I'm talking to people, so I don't believe people just lose their memory. Mm -hmm. I think people forget what they don't want to talk about. They, they, they hide those things. And, and sometimes it's a good person that does that because they're trying to protect their family mm -hmm. or they're trying to protect their self. But you know what? There's also bad people in this world, and, and, and those bad people intentionally lie and intentionally use those excuses, you know, to make it harder for the police to find out what really happened because they're deep down they're just a bad person. Oh, I agree with you. Okay. I so I don't think that we're dealing with a type of person here that's a bad person. I think we're dealing with with somebody like you that's coming forward and trying to be cooperative. Mm -hmm. But then again, I think you're somebody that would protect your family in, the, in a case like this. And if your family told you something, that you would try to protect them to the best of your abilities, and especially if, since you're I mean, a police she's, officer. Okay? She's, she's got but, kids. I mean, there, there's no way that I would cover this up for him. Okay. Well, I mean, but you know, we, we also have to take it. We we all have family. We know how family bonds run. I mean, you know, fam, family's family. 
You know, mm -hmm. you've got your work family, and you've got your real family. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there, there's there's things that we, the people have done in the name of family that that have been in, in positions that you know you would just kind of scratch your head to think, well, why would they do that? But it was all out of love, you know, you know, for the family. You yeah. and your brothers, you grew up together. You probably rumbled on around on the ground together, knocking each other's heads off. Yeah. I mean, we. I've got a brother. That's what we did growing up. We we took turns beating the fire out of each other. Yeah. But at the same point, we're 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 at a point here, like you said, coincidences. We throw them out the window. You know, not knowing exactly what time you sat down to ate dinner yesterday. That's one thing. Not remembering mm -hmm. that you ate dinner at that all. That you ate dinner at all. That's that's another. That's a different thing. Yeah. You know, we we. And then you add that on top of the biological evidence that's, that's been located in the trunk. That's, we're not, we're not that's what starts me right there. I mean, I just can't. I just can't believe that. Well, we're not. We're not asking you hard questions here, as far as. Oh, I'm not questions. asking you. Did you pull in at 7:22 p.m. on the other night? No. I'm asking you. Hey, last week, on Wednesday, a week from today, do you remember going out to the farm? Do you remember arriving with your brother? Do you remember leaving with your brother? What did you do while you were out there? Those aren't hard questions. And I, and I, don't, re I don't remember that. Okay. I mean, I don't. I mean, was it, is, it, is it just such a routine that you go out there and just arrive at the same time? And We both go out there a lot, you know. I mean, it is a place we hang out, you know, quite frequently. Sure, and, and, we, and you've told us that, and we believe that. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but we're asking you specific days a week ago, okay? And I, that was, I, have you been out to the farm since then, or is that the last time you've been out to the farm? Since the eighth, since mm -hmm. yes, a week ago last Wednesday. I'm sure I've been out there since then. Okay, have, have you and your brother both met out there since? No, the last. Okay, so okay. we're asking you about the last time that you and your brother met at the farm. All right, we're not asking you for specifics about it. We're just asking if you remember both arriving there, what you did while you were there, and when you left, and, and why I, you were I, there. I don't. I mean, I, I really don't. I'm, we're trying to make it as easy as we can for you as far as asking you questions. Because mm -hmm. from from our perspective, I mean, we're not talking about just you know coincidence y'all showing up at the same time. I mean, your brother's subject of a police investigation right now that's made national news. I'm telling you, I, if my brother was under the microscope right now, I would remember everything that he did, everything that we talked about, everything that sometime we did I can't, together. You know, sometime I can't remember what happened two days ago, you know. Well, and, and, I'm, and, I'm being 100% honest with you. And, 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 being, and, and I understand that, but being a police officer, you know, we, we kind of have to remember things. Yeah, you know, if you didn't write it down, if you didn't, you know, remember it, it didn't happen, right? Well, I, but I write everything down. If you look at my notes, I mean, it's all written down. I've got it. When well, I go testify in court, right? I mean, I, I've got the report right in front of me, you know. Sure. But that's sometimes, good. I, I mean, I can't, I don't, I couldn't be what I did two days ago. But, you know, work is one thing, you know, your family is another. Mm -hmm. If something happened that was close to my family, if something happened where that I was affected by it, because you know you're affected by this, whether or not you think you are, oh, you right. are. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. you're, you're wrapped up in this. Even even if, if there's no indication of anything else, your name is the same as his, right? I agree with that. And you do police work, right? Yes. And this is a police investigation. So there ain't no way you're going to be able to stay out of this completely, right? No. Okay, so you ought to be thinking in your head, how am I going to save face with the guys I work with? How am I going to, you know, explain this to my family? How you, You've got to have those things going through your head. If you're, if you're a normal functioning person like we all are, then, then it's natural for us to feel that way. It's natural for us to be inquisitive, you know, especially as police officers. You know, we always want to know what's going on. We, we're, we're like the neighborhood watch 24-7, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's the way we are. Now, I just can't expect that you would forget all those details, you know, being as you're a police officer and sitting here talking to you and seeing how you interact with people. I, I just find that very hard to believe. Well, I'm, I'm sorry you find it hard to believe. That's the way it is. I mean, it's just, that's, that's it. I mean, I mean, a month ago, I would expect you not to remember something, but a week ago, with all this national, national media attention and all these questions probably being asked by people out here on the street and all these rumor mills going around, you know, I would expect you to remember that. But at the same time, you got, you know, I mean, he hadn't really came to me, you know, I mean, I mean, you've talked, you talked to him that day, you know, he called well, I'm, you. I'm sure we talked briefly, but like I said, I mean, we haven't really discussed anything, so. Therefore, I don't have a lot of details to give you. Well, we're not asking you uh, details about necessarily what he did more than details about what you did. With details about you going to the farm and him being there, mm -hmm. okay, and you all leaving, mm -hmm. hence you being there and you mm -hmm. leaving. We we, you know. we would expect, we're just going back to this time, y'all arriving at the farm at 8, 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know it's it's getting to be summertime, but... You know, that doesn't leave you a whole lot of daylight for fishing or tooling around, and it gets dark about 9 o'clock. 9, 9.30. Yeah. So, but you're there until 
11, almost 1130. Yeah, but I mean, with all this going on, you know, I mean, it's like I say, it's just a good way to go out there and get rid of the Well, well, what did you do to get rid of stress? I mean, what did he do to get rid of stress? Did y'all shoot some, shoot some clay pigeons or something? Or no, I mean, I, like I told you before, I mean, I'll go out there, I ride the four wheeler religiously. You know, I'll go to the lake and like the last hour before it gets dark, that's about the best time to go fishing. Sure. So, I mean, I mean, I understand y'all's perspective, but the, you, you got it wrong. Houck can give them no details about what he and his brother did outside of the assurance that it had nothing to do with the disappearance of Rogers. The detectives aren't buying his story. I know you're doing your job, and I'm not, you know, I don't hold it against you. Do what you need to do. Was, was, is there any reason that her DNA is going to come back in your trial? Oh, I'm, I'm 100% certain it won't. You're, you're dead in the water. No now, way. What about on that blanket? No way. Any hairs, fibers? No way. Like that? No way. Never took anything out of your trunk is what you're saying. I didn't. So if we had somebody who had seen you do that, seen you take stuff out of your trunk, it would make your name. just making stuff up. The coincidence of you all both arriving there at the same time, not having any kind of conversation, can't remember anything that you talked about, anything that you did at the farm, and then leaving at the exact same time. I'm telling you, it was coincidence. I mean, I, I know it sounds fishy, but it's that's I mean, the way so, it is. But, but I mean, you can appreciate how. Oh, how, I, I can. I can. I mean, we're we're. I mean, this isn't our first rodeo, and and I'm sure this isn't your first time dealing with a criminal investigation. So yeah, you you kind of know what to expect. So I would even expect you to hold this to a higher standard and say, man, this is going to, you know, it just doesn't sound right. You know, it, it doesn't match it, up. It's a weird case. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's, it is a very odd case. You know, and, and we're, we're, we're like you said, we're, we're sitting here with, it, it still remains that we, we understand that, that you may not remember every single time you, you've been out at the farm or what you do. You know, you know, we all have habits. Like I said, you ride the four wheeler religiously, and and fishing right at right before dark is the best time to go. Yeah, I understand that completely. But something something's just not adding up here. You know, one plus one always equals two. And you look at the fact that you call him and and you raise your voice to him, like you said. To, to tell him that he needs to be careful. You know, I'm big brother. I'm gonna kind of, you know, try to protect sure. him. At the same time, I mean, I'm not gonna cover something like this up for him. I'm just not that kind of guy. And furthermore, I mean, there's no way he had anything to do with this. If something has happened to her, it wasn't it wasn't because something he did. Again, I know you guys have got a job to do. I mean, do it. But I mean, you, you're wasting time. Well, well, who who else would be responsible for this? I mean, I don't have any names to give. If I did, I mean, well, what do you what do you think? What do you think happened? I mean, I you know, I mean, she's a nice looking woman. I don't know if she got out there on the Bluegrass Parkway and somebody abducted her. I, you know, I don't know what happened, but I know Brooks didn't have anything to do with it. I just feel a hundred percent certain. I mean, I but he's I, never denied it to you. No, I mean, no, I mean, I've never asked him. I just don't feel like I feel like I know Brooks well enough that you know I know we would never do this. I'm not going to question him about it. So you've never even asked him that. You've never said, "Hey, did you have anything to do with this? Tell me you didn't have anything to do with this." No, I've never asked him that. Never, never said that. No. Well, I mean, you, you say you say you ride the four wheeler religiously. Mm -hmm. How often do you say you go out there? I mean, I'm out there two, three, four times a week. I mean, how come the cameras don't show you there? A couple weeks, you know, the two week period before last week. Thanks to the security footage, Hauk is becoming tangled in his own lies. I'm not saying I go there every week, but I'm just saying religiously on means every week two to three times. Yeah, so. well, I'm just saying on average, I'm probably out there a good two, three, four times a week. But you weren't for the two weeks before this that last week. That, that doesn't make sense. I mean, you know, that, that doesn't make sense. I mean, I, I don't know what he's. It, it should be on the camera. You go back and look at the camera, do what you need to do, but I mean, well, what I, I, we had. I you mean, say was, there, there was a three week period I've never been out there? The two weeks before. I don't believe that. Before this last uh, week. I don't believe that. Like since before the third. Uh, that's 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 not accurate. Okay. You can, but you can remember going out there then, but you can't remember. Well, I'm just saying, I just feel like, I just feel like I'm 99% certain that uh, there wouldn't be a two or three week gap between uh, going out there. 
Now, I don't necessarily remember going out there, but there's no way that I went three weeks without going to the farm. No, no way. So you, you, you say you went out to the farm on the eighth. You and your brother didn't have any contact that you remember. You just went did your own thing, even though you got there at the same time and left the same time. Yeah, I mean, I don't remember anything that he said or anything. We just kind of passed and rolled on. He had anybody with him? I uh, not that I not that I recall. Did anybody else see y'all both out there other than the camera at the I don't the house for I don't think so. Because you told somebody, I think, at one point that you, you remember being out there that night and, and you and Brooks sitting there talking with your mom. I don't remember that. I mean, okay. so you're saying that the, the biological fluids they found in the car. Are you for certain there's biological fluids? Yes, I'm, I'm absolutely certain that they, they, biological they, wouldn't cut, they, they wouldn't cut holes in your trunk liner and take it for further testing if it wasn't biological fluid. When you, when, you, when you get that car back and see that car, it's going to have stuff cut out all over it. And that blanket lit up like Chernobyl. That when blanket right in the back. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, there, there's no way. There, that none of her biological fluids or anything is going to be on that blanket or anything. I don't know where the stuff came from if it is there, but it's not hers. So you never helped him move a body? I did not. Never helped him move any evidence? Never. Because, I mean, here's what we think happened. We think that your brother is, is a good guy, and we think that he's probably a, a pretty good father to that boy. Uh, I mean, he's probably a pretty good boyfriend to, to Crystal, but we all have times where something just happens. All right, he probably he, he probably found out that some other police officer or some other person in the town was was cracking crystal um, and that when very he, easily could happen. you know and, and that very easily could happen you know somebody but maybe somebody maybe around here I don't know but uh, we think that, that that's what happened and your brother found out about it and confronted crystal about it and when he did you know he probably tried to maybe do something to her as far as you know, making her understand that that wasn't going to fly with him. And then after that point, you know, maybe it went just a little bit too far. And when it went just a little bit too far, he couldn't turn back time. And when he couldn't turn back time, who's he going to reach out to? But the one person that he trusts and knows that would help him out, and that would be you. And when he called you or he reached out to you, you know, you heard that your brother was in a tough spot and you being the good family man that you are, the, the good person that you are, you thought, well, I know this is wrong, but it's also right to take care of my brother and to keep him from going to prison for I the rest of his life. I can see you looking at that way, and then there's no way at that point. At that I mean, point, I done told you that, you know, well, at, at that point, Nick, you you know, you talked to him, and, and he asked you to do something for him, and you try to help him out with advice all that you can, but it finally comes to a point where advice isn't good enough anymore. He actually needed somebody to help him with something. And at that point, Nick, that's when you had to actually do something that you're ashamed of and that you're not proud of, and you blocked it from your memory because you are ashamed of that. And because yeah. you're a good person, you actually have feelings, you block that out in your head. And when you block that out in your head, that's why you're having a problem remembering this stuff. But I know, you know, and, and Detective Vaughn here knows that something like that happened, and that's exactly what we think happened in this situation. And Nick, this is the... This, this is the this, time we're this in the place. This okay. is your one chance. Now, now, Nick, if we find out that this stuff comes back in your trunk, or if we find a body, if a hunter finds that body pretty soon, mm -hmm. assuming, you know, that they do, um, it, it's going to be a different game. It's going to be a different ball game at that point, okay? Well, I, this right now is the first inning. You know, once we find that out, that's closer to the ninth. We've got less time to make up ground and change what's on the scoreboard mm -hmm. because the scoreboard's going to be the same as it would be in the ninth inning as it would be in the top or the bottom, it's not going to be what it was in the first. Mm -hmm. All right, we can change the score right now, but we can't later. We so can. Nick, this is the only opportunity that we have to sit here and find out if you're the actual honest person that we think that you are. Well, I'm 100% honest. Uh, and, yeah. I, and I don't deny that, Nick, but but you're not being honest with us about this, okay? But now, whether it's not truly honest. Well, okay, and it's obvious you, you've got plenty of experience. I mean, you guys are squared away, but I can tell you, well, you well, there, Nick, there's Nick, no way it happened the way you said it. It's it's it sounds logical. It's very logical. Nick, yeah, because it's what happened. But no, it didn't happen that way. It didn't. Okay. Then how do you know it didn't happen? You that know, way? Nick, you can't but remember what happened. Well, he's saying, bro, he's saying Brooks did it, and I was in on it. I mean, 
If there's no way. If, but were, were you there? Were you, well, were you able happened? to say that, that Brooks didn't do it? No, but I know him well enough to know that. Well, I know lots happen. of people, okay? I know troopers that I've worked with for my entire career. And guess what? They're not troopers anymore. And I thought I could say that. Made a and I thought I could say that. Because you know what? We're all people. No matter what, what this says, mm -hmm. no matter what we go to church and say on Sunday, no matter what that we appear like, everybody is a person. And every person can change in a heartbeat. Well, Whether they choose to or not, sometimes things just happen. We make mistakes. I haven't, I haven't made any mistakes, and I have been 100% honest. Well, Nick, I, I don't disagree that, you know, you hadn't made any mistakes in your career, maybe. But, but in this, there's been some mistakes made. Otherwise, we wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. Yeah. Because when we start thinking with this, this goes out the window. Logic goes out the window. Man, all I can tell you is, I mean, Brooks is a good guy. He didn't have anything to do with this. You know, I, obviously, you know, I'm hoping for the best and expecting the worst because I'm a police officer. I hope she walks in his front door anytime, but at the same time, I mean, she's been gone for a while. She had not made contact with the kids. Well, you, you know, guys, it's, it's national media attention. We know that, that she's not just out walking around in the public somewhere because somebody would have called us. Yeah. All right, it's been all over the news. Or she would have seen yeah. and at least her, called, her, called here and said, hey, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. She wouldn't have any way to get money. She wouldn't have any way to call anybody, okay? Yeah. So the assumption of what you're talking about, assuming the worst, I think we can say that's logical to think right If now. she had a flat tire, she would have used her cell phone. Rogers was a devoted mother, and she never would have left her children for such a long period of time. And call somebody. Call somebody. Her, cell phone, it makes her, sense. her cell phone. It makes sense. Her I mean. cell phone's dead out there. There's nobody calling to ask for help. Mm -hmm. You know, she didn't call. Now, Crystal's not the type of person, from what I know of her, and I've done a lot of background. She's not the type of person that's going to get out, get the spare tire out, get the jack out, change the tire, and nothing be out there on the scene. You know, but yeah, I don't think she. I don't tire. think she would change the tire. Okay. She, she would have called somebody. She, yeah. she would have called somebody. Mm -hmm. Okay, she would have called. Her, her boyfriend, she would have called her mom, her, her mm -hmm. mom, dad, she would have called the police, called 911. I don't know, maybe even would have called you, I don't know. But she would have called somebody. And you know, I think she didn't do that. She didn't do that. You know, as well as we do, bluegrass is not very heavily traveled at that time of night. After after 10 o'clock, you want to see a car every minute or two. Yeah. Man, I can appreciate the job you guys are doing. I mean, I'm not, you know, but, but I mean, I, 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 I wish we're be, not just doing a job, though, Nick. We're trying to find out for that the, the four kids. She got four yeah, kids, right? right? Four, 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 five, five, maybe five. five. Okay, she's got five kids. We're trying to find out for them because it's not fair for them to not know what happened to their mom. I'm, I'm with yeah, you. I'm that's why we're here. We're not here. We're not here to, to get anybody in trouble. I mean, that's part of our job. We okay. got to arrest people. We got to put them in jail. But our main job, or what I, what I come to work for, is. To, to solve these crimes, mm -hmm. to give people answers, all right? And I'm not going to waste my time on something that's not worth it. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be here talking to you, Nick, if, if I thought this was a waste of time. And when you said it's a waste of time, you know, I, I don't think well, you I think understand the, that. I think the okay, time this be, is not This is I, not a waste of time. I Nick. think the okay. time would be better spent somewhere else. I mean, well, where that's all I'm looking for. Where, where at? I think, I, think, I think the time would I'm be better spent right here if we just all started telling the truth. You know, well, I, know started talking. I know I'm telling the truth. Well, Are you Nick, telling the truth? Nick, I'm telling the truth. Okay. But what I need you to do is I need you to remember those things that you say that you can't remember. Okay. Whether it's it's damning towards your brother, whether it's damning towards somebody else, I just, I, 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 there's a reason why those aren't coming forward. Okay. There, there is, is a reason. There is a reason. You know what it is? Well, if you can't remember it, I mean. Yeah, I mean, that's it. I, that, that's not a very good reason. Well, you know that. You know that in your heart. You know that's it, not It a may good not reason. be a good reason, but it's the truth. Well, it's not a good reason. Okay. And well, then, then and we're, we're thinking of reason and logic in this room. You've already mentioned it twice. Yes, that's logical. Yes, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right, those are the kind of things that, that we use as investigators, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. And then, then you added the addition, the, the, the dog hit, indicating on, on your car. Let's take it to the lab. Biological fluids are found in the trunk of your car where there shouldn't be anything. They, there shouldn't be anything. There's not going to be. There not, shouldn't be. There, there's not going to well, be. Well, there is. I mean, there, there's no dispute in it. There is biological fluid in the trunk of your car. Well, the dog wouldn't have hit on the quarter panel in the trunk if there wouldn't have been something in there. We wouldn't have sent it to the lab if the dog didn't hit on it. The it lab wouldn't have tested it and sprayed luminol and it came back looking like a smurf if there wasn't something there. There's... You know, if just the dog hit on it, maybe the dog had something up its nose that day, okay? But when it, when you take it and you put it and you and you spray it at the lab, you know, that's two different things that are verified yeah, there's something. And in the, the guy car. that had the car before you was a neat freak. 
I mean, yeah, it was quite spotless when you got it, yeah. wasn't it? But you know, I mean, the other thing you, you got, you know, when speaking about logic, I mean, who would do this on a city maintained cruiser? No one would take special note of a police cruiser, assuming it had a legitimate reason to be there. A personal vehicle would have been most likely to be remembered or reported if it was in a secluded area at night. Who, well, you know, I mean, who would do that? What better, what, what better way to go undetected? I disagree, man. I would, I just disagree with that. What better way to go undetected? Who's going to stop a police car? I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, I just, I mean, I, I'm the bluegrass. I'm no, 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 one, no, no one's going to do who's that. Gonna stop a, who's going to stop a truck that's been followed by a police car? Yeah. Nobody. Who, who's going to think anything if they see a police car on the side I of the road? See, I, see your side of, I guess there's flip sides of everything, but who, who's going to think of anything if they see a police car on the side of the bluegrass parkway behind a car with a flat tire? You know, dropping dropping a car off on the interstate. Nobody's going to think anything of it. They're going to say, well, I mean, you're right. I, I can't deny it, you know, but... Uh, you're wrong. I mean, well, you, you you tell me that you're telling the truth, and 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 that's what you're you're maintaining, right? Most definitely. And you're telling me you want to be cooperative. That's why you're here, right? Yes. Okay. What about taking a polygraph exam? You took one to become a police officer. I took one to become a police officer. Didn't you take one? Yeah. I okay. 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 Now we know that that your brother went up there and took a polygraph. Okay. He didn't fail the polygraph. All right, we didn't we didn't say he failed the polygraph. Mm -hmm. They said that the polygraph was inconclusive, which means it's neither pass nor fail, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if they can't get a hundred percent accurate reading, they're not going to make a judgment on it, right? Because they're being fair. All right, inconclusive doesn't mean anything. It just means inconclusive. It's like parking two cars. If you can't tell which one was the one you're you're getting ready to write a ticket for, you're not going to write it. Yeah, you don't you don't know, pull them yeah, out. I'm hundred percent sure. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mind to take the polygraph. I mean, I really don't. Uh, so, you, so you, you take polygraph and say the exact same thing if I ask you on the polygraph, if they said, Nick, did you have any involvement with the disappearance? I'd say no, person? because I didn't. Okay. And if they said, Nick, did you have any knowledge of her disappearance, what would you say? No. Okay. Now, if they ask you, did you load that body up into the trunk of your Barstown City no. Cruiser? No. Okay. So, pretty easy test, wouldn't it be? Sounds like it. Okay. You'd be willing to do that? How'd you do on it? How would you do on it? I think I'll pass it flying colors. I've got nothing to hide. How about anybody else? I mean, did, did Crystal, you think Crystal would have known something that she shouldn't have known and that's probably why she went missing? If you don't believe the story about him getting, you know, maybe a little physical with her maybe one time, you think she could have known something? What's back that, man? Back, back up a little bit. I'm not following. Okay. You. Well, you, you said you don't believe the story that he maybe got a little physical with her. No, I don't think Brooks has ever been physical. Okay. Now, what about uh, Brooks? He's got a lot to lose. I mean, he's got a pretty pretty nice life, it seems like. I mean, he's doing pretty well for himself. What if what if she had some information that would turn his life upside down? Yeah, I mean, he would still, no matter what she had, he wouldn't have done anything like this. Okay. Now, what if she had information on somebody like you or somebody else? What, what would you say about that? I don't know where you're going with information. What, what, kind of, what, you, I mean, what if she knew something about you that you didn't want anybody else in the world to know? Uh, or, or anybody, not not just you. I mean, and, and, what, what you and if she did, what, what do you ask? Do, do you think that might have been what happened? I mean, is that more logical than him getting a physical altercation with her? What's more logical? I mean, did she pop off and say, you know, well, I, I know you're dirty, you're doing this and this to these tenants, or you're doing X, Y, and Z to this, and he just, you know, and just, you know. He ever say anything like that to you? No. He never mentioned anything about her making stuff up about it? No. Telling her friends anything? So, so obviously we've gone down that it's not a logical explanation in your mind. I don't think so. Right. And, and what, like like him, I agree. I think what happened is it was something heat of the moment. We all get in the heat of the moment, and 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 just be honest, shit happens. Mm -hmm. you know, shit happens that we can't take back that we wish we could. Yeah, I mean, I, I just you know, I I know nothing like that happened, and I mean, you guys are kind of going over the same stuff. I mean, I well, I mean, it, 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 I'm gonna tell you, if I could help you in any way with the investigation, I would. I mean, I'm just that kind of guy. You know, she's got kids. There's no way that I could uh, I could deal with something like that and just cover it up. Well, what about Brooks? You know, what about him? What about him? Is he that type of person, or is he my type of person that could? I mean, ever everybody's different. You know, oh, well, he, he, there's no way he could do something like that. 
He's not capable of it. Would he be capable of asking somebody else to do something like that? Brooks might not have been willing to risk hiring a stranger, but that isn't the same as asking a favor of a brother. Brooks ain't gonna hire that Alan. I mean, it's just, it's, there's just no way he had anything to do with it. What about, uh, he rents a lot of property. I'm sure he rents to some shady people. Oh, I bet he does. They ever found any indoor grows or anything in any of his properties? No, not that I'm aware of. You, you know they do that around here a lot. You know, oh, yeah, properties. Yeah, like that. Yeah, I mean, Nelson County's full of dope. I mean, yeah. um, any chance that he'd be involved in something like that? No way. Bruce doesn't fool with any kind of drugs, he doesn't drink. No way. I mean, there's certain people that are involved in that kind of stuff that aren't, you know, aren't involved yeah, in it yeah, themselves, yeah. you know what I mean? They're in it for the money. Yeah, but he's right. not, I mean, he makes plenty of money. What, what, do you, what do you think should happen to somebody, say say they, they killed somebody in the heat of the moment? Just kind of a, it was, they didn't, they didn't really mean to. I think they're just as guilty as somebody that killed them anyway. Yeah, I don't have any patience for that kind of crap. I mean, she's got kids and stuff, and I mean, anybody that could uh, have anything to do with her disappearance or possibly kill somebody, man, they need to be dealt with. What, what about somebody that, that comes in after the fact that, that didn't have anything to do with, with the killing or the disappearance? And I think they're just as guilty. Do you think any of them should be given a second chance? No, I don't believe in second chances. I mean, I'm, kind of, I'm, I'm a pretty conservative guy, you know, on a lot of issues, and mm -hmm. I mean, man, anybody could do anything like that, just, we don't need them here on earth. So if, if Brooks did do this, you'd feel the same way? Most definitely. If Brooks did it, he'd be dead to you? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have another thing to do with him. I mean, anybody that's that despicable and can just disregard the kids and... I mean that's that's a that's a pretty nasty person. Even, about, if, about even, as bad as it even if there was a reason, if that person thought they had a reason, I can't think of one reason in my head to justify something like that. If somebody, you know, we obviously have to, to go through our lives thinking different than other people. Uh, as police officers, you know, we know we might kill somebody every day we come to work. Possibility. But that's only if somebody's going to try to kill us first. Exactly. Now that's well, obviously self defense. That, that, like, that's, that, 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 that's a difference. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, having that same mentality, you know, did Crystal and him have ever had any problems? Maybe where she could have done something to him where he had to defend himself. And then I don't really know. And I don't really know of any instance like that, or the incident y'all brought up about her seeing some other dude. I mean, I, I really, well, I, I can say fairly sure, certainly that she was seeing other people. There is no evidence that Rogers was involved with someone else, but the detectives hope that this will push Hulk to reveal a motive. You no, know, she may have. I mean, I didn't really know her that well. I can't. I can't tell you you're wrong. You know. And your brother, you know, has he uh, has he ever been known to run around on girls? I don't think he's ever ran around on her. I can't say that he's never cheated on a girlfriend. But mm -hmm. I mean, well, your I, brothers, you've probably seen some things or heard some things in the past, but. Yeah, as far as Crystal, he wasn't running around on her? No. Well, why weren't they married? Why didn't they get married? You ever talk about marrying her? Well, I mean, that, as far as I knew, she was married to, uh, was it Keith Rogers or mm -hmm. whoever it was? I mean, and, and, I think they, you know, at one time they were talking about, uh, you know, trying to get her divorced from him, but as far as either, either one of them running around, I, I don't believe that was the case. That's what I, that's what I believe. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I wasn't around her a lot, and I can't tell you that you're wrong. Well, when could you take the polygraph exam? Uh, I'll be off the next few days, so I mean, okay. so I mean, I mean if, we, if we if we got one set up for tomorrow, or got one, well, it's kind of late now to set one up tomorrow, but uh, maybe if we got one set up for the next couple of days, would that be something that you well, could why, do? Why don't we just shoot for Monday? Okay. Well, it, what if they're, you well, know, what, what is today? Today is Wednesday, so we got Thursday and Friday still before they close down for the weekend. Okay. It well, all, all depends on their availability. Yeah, I mean, they, they might, they might just, have. They might I mean, have I've got a lot of stuff going on. I just moved and everything. Let's just try to shoot for money. And if that'll make you guys happy, then, then I'll be more than glad to do it. Well, I don't have a problem with it. The thing about it is, you know, we go up there and take the test. Uh, you, you're telling us that you're you're being honest. Yes, right? 100%. Uh, you're 100% you're on that. Mm -hmm. now, you know that I've sat here and talked to people in that same seat that you're in right mm -hmm. now that have told me they're being 100% honest. And later on, I find out they're not. 
Okay. Is that a fair assessment? Most definitely. Okay. So you sitting in the chair that I'm sitting in right here and somebody sitting there in your chair telling you that same thing. I'm skeptical as you are. The, the, I'm probably more skeptical. The, the polygraph is something that can that can help us. It's a tool. We don't use it in court, but mm -hmm. it's a tool. Yeah. All right. Just if, like if that makes you feel, you know, whatever it does for you, it'll be fine. But but agree and do that now. You're not going to change your mind later. No, you're, you're going you're to be a man of your word, and you're going to take polygraph. You got it. We said it. Yes. Yes, sir. Hang tight. Yep. All right. All right. Do you want anything to drink? No, I'll just, just be wrapping it up, though, because I'm, I'm fixing to get out. Okay. Right. I had to get the keys back from the car so we can get out of here. Yeah, I'm not behind us, but I'm not asleep. Can you think of anything else I need to ask you or anything else yeah, that's important? I, I, mean, I, I think you did a good job, you know. I mean, I can commend you for that. I, you seem like a pretty square way to well, you know, I just want to make sure that we cover everything because obviously there might be a second opportunity for us to sit down and talk. Uh, I mean, if you remember something that's different between now and then, so, yeah, I mean, you I'll set up that polygraph exam and I mean, I'm sure we can talk for a minute or two before or after that if we need to. If, something's if you've got a card, I'll be more than happy to call you. I mean, I'll tell you ready to roll. Nick Hawk was subsequently fired from the police department for failing to help with the investigation. The body of Crystal Rogers is yet to be found, and Hawk still strongly believed to have some connection with her death. Just a year after her disappearance, her father was murdered, and it was discovered that the gun had been sold by Nick Hawk, acting under an assumed name. So far, he has not been charged with any crime. Thank you for watching. Check out my Patreon link in the description below and drop a like on this video. Also, don't forget to leave a comment. I'm always curious to read what you thought of the case.